of the great society. Entirely reasonable. Thank you. You're welcome. Many people fail, possibly even some young people fail to um, uh, appreciate the message in the lyric of, the lyric of much of today's music uh, because they have some trouble hearing it, I guess. Uh, they have as much trouble hearing as you expect. You mean the younger they are, the better they hear it. That's right. They're also the fact that they may listen to it 19 times once they buy an album. That's something to do with it. Mm -hmm. You don't really hear really it the first time you hear it either. You have to reference. On one hand, and the young hippie culture on the other. Does that seem reasonable to you? Uh, yeah, to a great extent. See, what has happened is uh, the white kids primarily have a lot of them who come from wealth, because I, when I was up in Haight-Ashbury, I met a cat whose folks are millionaires, you know, yeah. and he well, said... somebody has to send you money from home or you can't live there too long. Right, you, know. And, you know, you can walk on that barefoot on the sidewalk, man, but uh, you get a cold, you got to call a doctor, you know. Yeah. And uh, the cat said, I put it down, you see, and a lot of white cats have put it down. They walked out of Beverly Hills and they said, we don't want your life. You lied to us and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And it is a little strange to walk into a supermarket in, in Beverly Hills, you know, and yeah look down and see a cat with no shoes on, man, you know, and you know you're not in a poverty area, you know, but uh, the Negro cat is trying to get into that scene, yeah. you see, because like we've been out there shucking cotton for so long, we're trying to get in to yeah. that uh, particular scene. Yes, yeah. they're at one door going out and you're at another door right, coming in. Right, right, but we want but now we've gotten to think where we want to be accepted as blacks, you right, know, right. because one time, you know, the, the thing was to be a white Negro, you know, have proper yeah. manners and talk properly yeah. and be a, a dark white man, you yeah. see? Like they're doing Peyton Place now, uh, which kind of blew my mind. You know, they're, they're putting on, a, a, Negro, uh, on the, a Negro family. You know, that's new. We never had families before, you know. <laughs> True. Yeah. I don't have a birth certificate, folks. <laughs> my mother's going to punch me in the mouth when she sees the show. But, uh, you know, like they announced, huh, we're putting on a Negro family, an entire unit, you know, yeah. and it's going to be a typical Negro family, and, and the head of the family is a neurosurgeon, you know. <laughs> it's like I saw Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, uh, which uh, is a plausible picture. I, I saw it the other day, as a matter of fact, and it's a plausible picture which asks a very simple question. Can a white, wealthy, liberal San Francisco family accept the marriage of their daughter to a typical Negro who happens to be a combination of Jonas Salk, Albert Schweitzer, and the Jolly Green Giant? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there's so many things I want to talk to both of you fellas about. It's, it's a little difficult to try to just channel it. Channel it well, narrowly. I tell you one thing. As far as I'm concerned, I don't play for hippies, uh, uh, by and large, because... I want to reach mass America, you see. Hippies are a minority group, mm. you dig it? And uh, I want to reach everybody. Yeah. And uh, a hippie comic is a guy who goes out and the band breaks up. They fall all over the floor like, ah, beautiful, beautiful. But John and Martha sitting out there say, what did he say? I don't understand the damn yeah. thing he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> now, once you get to the realization that the band ain't paying your salary, Yeah. <laughs> That's then important. you know you're going to start. Yeah. Frank, are there any, uh, strictly speaking, hippie comedians? I, I don't really know of any. Uh, there are some, some guys who are amusing fellows, but are there any professional comedians uh, out of the hippie culture? Well, when I say hippies, I just mean guys who do very in Inside material, things, very, yeah. You know, because I want to be able to hit that cat in Iowa. You know, sure. and sometimes I get the guys, like when I played the Fairmont in San Francisco, mm -hmm. I get the guys off the Gray Line tours, you know, and I got to bring <laughs> them in. You oh, know. absolutely. They'll wear those saddle shoes in, you know, and... I go down and I talk to him, you know, I say, hey, baby, I know you're from Iowa, it's cool, you know. Yeah. I know when you get back home, I can just hear the dialogue now. Hey, Clem, I saw one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you got to pull all those people in and mold them into one audience and uh, yeah. let them know that you're with them. You know, <laughs> you know I, well, I misunderstood you uh, when you referred to the hip... Uh, comedians. I thought you meant strictly hippie comedians. No, no. I just uh, mean the in. E my misunderstanding, nevertheless, does give rise, I think, to a moderately interesting question. Frank, uh, do the hippies feel any need to the extent that one, you know, one guy can answer for a, a million people? Uh, do you feel that you and your chums uh, feel the need of any professional representatives, uh, like, to, to be funny, you know, the way people pay me to stand up and be funny, or pay Godfrey to stand up and be funny as a specialty? I'll tell you what they need. They need some representation in government. Every young person needs a representative in government, not just hippies. 
Oh, that's that's true, but that's that's. They don't need anybody to laugh. You feel well? What do you laugh at then? Just the the. Uh... We watch regular movies on television. <laughs> you mean you laugh at the serious movies? Sure. You ever seen a John Wayne war picture? <laughs> That is interesting, then, that the concentration creatively is, is uh, mainly on the music, and, uh... Well, no, when, when to, an alienate, to an alienated person, face it, a John Wayne movie is kind of funny, man, when we're mm -hmm. still beating all the Indians, you know, and you take a movie like, say, Zulu, you know, yeah. where, like, 200 cats... You going away to sell some grits? Bye, baby! <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Godfrey, when we had to pause for that commercial, you had just started mentioning the movie called The Zulu? Yeah, well, well Frank w was talking about how, for comedy, he looks at John Wayne movies on television. Mm -hmm. And I said, y you can dig it. You know, like the Indians always lose, man. They had to win one or two things. Yeah. And uh, you take a movie, for example, uh, from, uh, uh, like, Zulu, you know. Zulu, man, we lost again. You know, like, <laughs> 200 cats beat 4,000 of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that just don't make sense, you know. And it seems like every time a British soldier fires a bullet, you know it's going right through 13 Zulu. <laughs> you know, because obviously Zulus are stupid. They attack in a straight line. You know? <laughs> say, Stay in line, baby. Save bullets, you know. <laughs> you know, it's bad, you know? And, That's funny. And, and the thing is, Zulus, man, like, they always attack from behind, you know, with a dirty dagger. Tong, tong, tong. And like, the white cats go in, they burn down a whole village, kill everybody in it, and that's called a victory. We beat up one British soldier, it's called a massacre. <laughs> so the value's Terrible. a little twisted, man, and at the end of the picture, generally, you find out that, first of all, one British colonel has, like, wiped out an entire platoon of Zulus, man, with a wrapped-up copy of the London Times. <laughs> Take that, you bloody savage, you, you know. And then, at the end of the movie, they always add, you know, they start assembling everybody, you know, and saying, where's uh, Corporal uh, Friswell? And uh, where's Corporal Sanso? And then they say, whatever happened to our faithful scout, Matumbi? <laughs> That's us, baby, and we ain't never winning. And they always say, oh, he, li he died. <laughs> so, like, we always end up dying, you know. You know, it would be a marvelous it. idea for somebody to, to uh, provide an endowment to, to set up, just pay all the bills, set up an African film company or a, a bunch of, you know, a Navajo, Navajo Pictures presents with John Wayne as the bad guy, right? Yeah, that'd be Wouldn't that be pretty wild? No, it's, it's wild. Here like, comes that dirty, rotten Davy Crockett. <laughs> It's like, switch. But you look at some of the movies that we make and, and claim as reality. For example, I looked at, at Laurence Olivier when he did uh, Othello uh, in films, you know. And that was the first time I'd ever seen him do Othello, and, and that was kind of wild, man. First of all, uh, he was more concerned with playing a Negro than playing Othello, you see. Hmm. So what would happen is he would run from an Elizabethan squeal to Amos and Andy. <laughs> so his voice would sound like, and I did see Desdemona, and I said, wherefore I doubt Desdemona. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, I have never seen anybody that black, man. You know, like, first of all, he used this black Max Factor makeup, and the cat kept standing in shadows, like, <laughs> And all you see is his lips, you know, or his eyes. You know, it's really that nonsense. So I look at movies and I laugh, man. I laugh at movie, Doris Day movies blow my mind, you know, because, let's face it, to worry about a 47-year-old woman's virginity is a bit ridiculous. Doesn't happen too often. Particularly when you've got a 19-year-old son. <laughs> I haven't seen, uh, or rather, I haven't had the chance to listen to your... Uh album, uh, Godfrey. I understand there's something amusing in here about golf. Well, my, my album is based on my experiences, uh, and, uh, you know, in the show business, everybody always wants you to join their thing, you know, and the great thing in show business, everybody says, let's play golf, and uh, I've always looked at golf from afar and figured you got to be a little weird to play golf, you know, to get up out of a warm bed 4.30 a.m. in the morning and uh, leave a sexy chick, right? and uh, run out on the front lawn and uh, look up at the sky at 4.30 in the morning and say, gonna be a great day. It's pitch black up there. How the hell can he tell? You know, and, and the whole thing is you can't play golf like loosening your tie. No, man, you gotta buy a golf outfit. Yeah. You gotta buy a golf shirt. You know what a golf shirt is? That's a regular shirt that costs $20 more because it's got a faggy alligator on it. <laughs> 
mean an naked chick on a tie? I mean, that's together, man. Who needs a sissy alligator? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd buy a Ben Hogan hat, Ben Hogan shirt, Ben Hogan shoes, and I play like Ben Gurion. Yeah. <laughs> no, so my act is is everything that occurs to me that happens to me in life. The humor of reality. Yeah. You know, like in Beverly Hills, for example, which is a, a str I spend a lot of time there because I live in New York, and it's a peculiar microcosm of America. Nobody walks in Beverly Hills. Everybody drives. They have the weirdest police department in the world. I mean, they will arrest you for walking suspiciously. You can't even walk your dog. I mean, you got to drive him around in a car. The car. <laughs> Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen. Moving Frank Zappa keeps disappearing. Can somebody uh, go bring Frank back? Bring Frank. Let's hear it for Frank. Let's bring folks. Frank back. <laughs> you like? And while they're looking for Frank, we'll also see if they can find our next guest, who certainly, to use the old line, needs no introduction. One of your real favorites, Mr. Ed Begley. Here he is. <laughs> Well, you know, it's wild. Frank and I would talk while we were off camera, you know. He said, man, I'm a minority group, too. I said, I'm hip, baby, you know, because we're talking about fuzz, you know, because uh, I drive through Beverly Hills. I walk through Beverly Hills, you know, and I'm... It's a, not easy to do. Yeah, I'm a smarty, man, you know, because, like, uh, the cat stops me, and I says, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking for a house to rob, you know. And I, and I, <laughs> you know, and he says, you think you're a minority? I'm a minority, too, and it's true, man, because we talk about basic freedoms, mm -hmm. you know. Now, he has a right to wear his hair that way if he digs it, you know, it's oh, yeah. his scene, right? Yeah. But he gets stopped as much as I do, man. If he walks through Beverly Hills, man, they'll shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, seriously, uh, I know this is sort of a truism, which a lot of people uh, uh, just uh, take at face value. Is it true in your own personal experience? That I get stopped a lot by police? Just walking down the street, do the police bug you or does anybody no, bug the, you? The, the police don't uh, give me any trouble. They haven't given me personally any trouble, mm -hmm. but uh, my day-to-day uh, -day activities are not uh, the activities of the ordinary person with hair. <laughs> you mean with long hair? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm not a representative case. Yeah. Yeah. But I have, I have trouble with the normal citizenry, you know. You know, Ed, it just occurred to me that depending on how you slice it and how you define uh, individual associations, we may all be members of one minority group or another, you know? Yeah, well, what I resent... Uh, I'm a resenter. Speak uh, freely. You can't say anything against the Negroes, you can't say anything against the Jews, but you can say any damn thing you want against the Catholics uh, or uh, against the Irish. Now, uh, I heard a joke the other day, and I resented it terribly about... Uh, 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 a Catholic church that uh, that burnt down up uh, in New York near uh, 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 the uh, Negro section, and uh, they didn't have any place to hold their services, and uh, the Jews let them use the uh, the temple to hold their their Catholic services. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, uh, all these Catholics were streaming out of this uh, Jewish temple, coming down the steps, and two Negroes came along and stood and watched them. And one turned the other and said, Man, did you ever see such a crummy bunch of Jews? <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, that, that's a taste award. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you confuse me, Ed. I, I don't know. <laughs> I get lost in you, there. You say you disapprove of that joke. Who asked you to tell it? You know? <laughs> All right, Jews, let's get up. All right, Irish people, let's march. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. Uh, I think an interesting and that isn't all. <laughs> That's what you think, Ed. It is all. <laughs> no, go ahead. Say what you want. I think this is about as free speech, uh, free spoken a program as we've had in quite some time, right? From the, and as well, Dave Allen would they, say, they, why not? Go they ahead. tell the story about this uh, old guy that uh, they called the, the priest in to perform a, a funeral service. Is this another story you don't like? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's a new album uh, by Ed Begley called Stories I Hate. I don't like yeah. <laughs> And, and, and okay. this, this priest came in. Uh, priest came and, in. On the defamation label. They, they had a few words of conversation, you know, and finally the priest said, uh, well, uh, all right, now, uh, uh, who is this for? Is this a member of the family? And uh, the fellow said, no, 
He said, well, is it a relative? He said, no. He said, well, who do you want me to conduct the funeral service for? He said, our dog. He said, what? You called me here, a priest, to perform a funeral service for a dog? And he said, well, uh, uh, it was a very, very, very close uh, friend of the, the family, you know, and we had him for a long time. And the priest said, the idea, the thing. And he started to go out and slam the door. And the old fellow said, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you won't uh, perform the uh, funeral service, can you tell us uh, somebody who will, please? And he said, why don't you go and get Rabbi Mashinsky? Maybe he'll do it. And the old fellow said, do you think he would perform the funeral service for $10,000? And, and the priest said, I'm sorry. What, what did you say? He said, do you think he will perform the funeral service for $10,000? 10,000? He said, why didn't you tell me it was a Catholic job? <laughs> <laughs> All Jewish Catholics, pick it. <laughs> this is a pretty weird program today, right? I'm analyzing this as we go along. I represent your interests here, and I say that this is a weird program we're doing. <laughs> However, it, I think it's nice to open the windows and let in some fresh air, right? Because it's about a week of that and you get thrown off television altogether. Uh, I think one thing that a lot of great many people may know about Ed Begley outside of the stories that he doesn't like uh, are that he has a great interest, as do our, uh, our hippie visitors, in poetry. As a matter of fact, the lyrics, uh, Frank Zappa's lyrics, are often poetry. And uh, Ed has a lot of wonderful albums. We don't even have all of them on the desk. Here's one called Favorite American Poems, Ed Begley, on the Cademan label. Here's one, Tom Sawyer, read by Ed Begley. Here's Ed Begley, read by Tom Sawyer. <laughs> no, this is uh, Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. And there are some others uh, backstage, they tell me. How long have you been recording poetry, Ed? Uh, I think I, I started uh, uh, when I was uh, on Broadway in Inherit the Wind with Paul Muni. Mm -hmm. uh, I did uh, great American speeches with Melvin Douglas, Vincent Price, Carl Sandburg, and myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... Uh, uh, this company, if you don't know, uh, probably has what are considered the greatest voices in the American theater, as well as in the British theater, yes. as well as the playwrights, also the poets. And uh, I think I've probably made uh, more uh, recordings for them than any other artist they have on their label. We would be honored if you would, uh, if you have anything committed to memory, if you'd re recite a poem for us. Could you? got the uh, lights and the microphone all set up in the center of the stage for I tried to find how my heart could be so blinded how could I be fooled just like the rest I'm strong with your fast car and your glass ring, soft voice and your sad eyes. I fell for your whole thing. I don't regret having met up with a girl who breaks hearts like they were nothing at all. I've done it too Now I know Just what it feels like And just like I said There's no regret Television Well, nice to see you again Sit with the old clock the wall It's about time we're hanging up for tonight God, we hope you had as much fun as we've had Because we certainly had a lot of fun here That's why we're here to entertain you Louie Louie, we'll get that tomorrow night. Caravan with the drama solo, got you covered. How's your sister? Check your cheese. How's your mama now? Nice to see you again. You think it'll rain? Like your new hairdo? Wonderful. Hi, how are you? Wonderful. Bogodio, Scooby-Doo, Shana-Nan. Ah.